Um, okay, it is uh, Monday, November 21st, 2022, <laughs> and the Board of Commissioners of the Hardwick Electric Department is meeting. Uh, all commissioners are present, as are General Manager Mike Sullivan, Beth Essery, Ken Nolan, and Ken St. Amory. Is that the way you pronounce it? Uh, St. Tamore. St. Tamore. Um, and, and Sarah. Sorry. Sa Bress or Bressy? Braze. Braze. <laughs> I'm doing well on names today, I apologize. <laughs> no, no um, need to apologize. Okay. Um, are there any modifications to the agenda? Yeah, I was gonna have uh, Sarah step in on the first bullet since we don't have DeLorean. And I think Vince had something he wanted to put in other business. Okay. Um, Vince, can we put it on um, at at the end with the general manager's report um, after sure. the general manager's report? If if we get to it, because uh, I I apologize, but I may not be able to do a long meeting. I'm um, I've done things to myself. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, it, I can make it I can make it brief, but I I think it's important to at least bring up. Okay. Why don't we Why don't we put it at the in other business at the end? Okay. Um, okay, well, Sarah, I think the floor is yours. Excellent. Um, thank you. Minutes. Oh, yep. Oh, the minutes, sorry. The minutes, right. Uh, does uh, have people reviewed the minutes? I have. Yes. I wasn't at the meeting, so I had I I'd have no idea yeah, whether the minutes were accurate or not. So, um, <laughs> is there a motion to adopt the minutes? I move to adopt the minutes. Second. Is there, are there, is there any discussion? Hearing none. Um, all those in favor of adopting the minutes of the last I meeting? Know. All right. Um, the minutes are adopted. Okay, now, Sarah, sorry. <laughs> no, no, thank you very much. Um, so Mike, let me know that he had shared with you the regular board meetings report from earlier this month that was written just before the end of October. So there's been a lot of movement and filings and changes since then, which I provided a mid-month report last Friday that covered several upcoming deadlines on several dockets and initiatives between the department and the commission. I don't have you all had a chance to look through those. I figure I don't want to spend a whole lot of time going through every single line item, but if there are specific questions that are of importance, I am happy to answer any of them. Um, we didn't get them until to today. Um, okay. and, and so, I did look through them, not super carefully, but I guess my question would be, what, is there anything that we should be particularly aware of? And, and is there anything where there are upcoming filings where we might want to be filing comments or looking at what VEPSA is planning on filing or anything along those lines? So there's this, where we can do something, you know, um, the, that would be my questions for you. Yeah, so I think some of the bigger ones that I see having longer term impacts of items that have come up most recently, we have the distribution transformer survey that the department has sent out. And that is in direct response, the way I see it, to all of the supply chain issues combined with all of the electrification pushes that are happening statewide and nationally, to be frank. And so I think the department is trying to understand where all of the DUs in the state are in stock and also planning ahead for that. And so we will be sending out you know, a survey or at least some way to compile that information on members' behalf. Um, Mike, do you have something? In <laughs> you unmuted, so I assume you've got something there. Sure, I can, ju I can jump in on that. So um, all the vendors or all the manufacturers have lead times 
uh, in excess of 42 weeks on transformers and all kinds of other standard equipment that we normally have a four to six week lead time on. So there's a lot of customers complaining to the department, hey, I've been waiting for seven months to get this service and you know my business is not going to be able to start on my planned date, and et cetera, et cetera. So due to those complaints that are coming in through CAPI to the department, I think this whole effort to focus on that and to find out if they can help the utilities uh, in any way, they're going to try and do that. But we we are positioned well. I bought ahead uh, when I saw the commodities market jumping there about two years ago. So we're covered for many months of needs ahead. We're we're fine. If I can, can add before you you move off this topic, um, we just got at three o'clock this afternoon and noticed from uh, American Public Power Association that they have submitted a request. Uh, to Congress, uh, the Appropriations Committee in the Senate in particular, uh, for a billion dollars of funding to go to DOE on this transformer supply chain issue. Um, they're trying to activate the uh, National Defense Production Act uh, and looking for funding to do that. So the DPS is doing locally and there's also a push nationally to make changes as well. Could, uh, Sarah, could would you mind summarizing the <coughs> uh, uh response to the fifty one hundred or you know the net metering rule information? Because I I read through the doc, I just started reading through it and I didn't get very far. The net metering rule from earlier this year. Yeah, earlier this year, but uh, you know the public input's gonna is ending on November twenty fifth based on the summer, summary of early for this year's stuff. Is that, yeah. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. sorry, go ahead. No, 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 I was gonna say, I, it, it, there's been a lot of filing since then. So I let me just look here real quick so I can refresh my memory. I believe from what I understood was that it was a support for the reduction. This was just the rate setting, correct? Right. Well, is yeah. rate setting and 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 the uh, any other renewable energy um, incentive? No, my, I guess it's just the net meter. Yeah, my recollection is that we filed a letter of support based on the department's proposal. Okay, thanks. And what what was that? A slight slight reduction. I if I'm remembering right, slight reduction and um, kind of trying to even that out across the various rates from the past, basically. It was the biennial, um, the biennial adjustment to the statewide blended rate. That yeah. was the big issue. That, yeah, and that's, I mean, there's not a whole lot we can do, right? I mean, they were stuck with the, the we've got net metering by statute. So it's, it's, uh, the bigger problem isn't the blended rate. The bigger problem is the whole structure. Approach. Um, on that vein, just a little bit is the department's synthesis. They published the synthesis of the um, renewable energy standard and programs review back in the beginning of November, if I'm recalling the dates correctly. And it appears that they will be pursuing the 18 month timeline um, and engaging as many stakeholders as possible, not just the DUs, but also communities and uh, different population sectors. So that, that will also be coming up. I expect that they will be publishing more information within the next month, although they seem to be trying to get a lot of items off the to-do list as well. So it's, it's pretty uh, busy over there as, as I see it. So Ken, Nolan, um, there's been some activity with those of you that have been around long enough. Remember TJ Poor, he was our uh, purchase power guy at BEPSA and he's now in a leadership role with the department. And Ken has been working closely with him targeting how things may be changing overall with the res uh, and net metering and other items. Has there been any recent movement on any of that, Mr. Nolan, 
or status quo or what's up with that stuff? Yeah, with the department, not really. Um, they're focused on getting the legislature to agree to, to their 18 month timeline. That's the big push there. Um, they're trying to create some space to have the conversation and aren't really engaging until they see where that's going to land. <clears throat> so there's a push at the PUC and at the legislature. Um, coincidentally, I've been in a couple of meetings with other utility folks and, and actually more broadly housing folks, Renewable Energy Vermont as a, a group that's starting to have a conversation around uh, what comes next. And there's, I wouldn't say consensus, but there's growing agreement that we need to combine essentially three things into one conversation. That's a, a redesign of the renewable energy standard and what that looks like, um, a redesign of net metering, and structurally what sizes of generation qualify as net metering and which ones don't, um, and the clean heat standard, which some of you may recall was approved by the legislature last year, vetoed, and on the veto override failed by one vote. So there's a, a push amongst the Democratic Party to bring that back. And the clean heat standard would essentially create a renewable energy standard, but related to fuel dealers, not electric utilities. Um, so it has implications for the tier three programs that, that we offer. Um, there's, there is a group that's starting to talk about take those three items, put them in a <laughs> put them in a bucket, and come up with a new design Fine. that that works better for all, all three of those combined. So, uh, the concept I've been hearing about is essentially dropping the size of net metering from the 500 kW uh, limit to something lower. I've heard as low as 15 kW. I don't, I don't know if that's supportable or not. Um, but then putting more of a standard offer like structure in for the net metering above 15 kW, where there would be a standard procurement process and uh, potentially the, the pain of those costs shared statewide instead of each utility having to absorb it themselves. But we're in the very early stages there. So it's, it's going to be about a two year discussion, I would expect. Yeah, there's a possibility of eliminating community solar but <laughs> with changing that that net metering uh, threshold. They, they would redesign community solar so that right now the community solar essentially runs through the net metering program. That's how the incentives are paid. They're talking about eliminating that going forward, but creating a structure that allows the community solar to happen more in a true community solar type nature. Um, so it would be a, a designated project with utility contract, rates paid to the folks who own pieces of that. Not, not that you would get a net metering payment on your electric bill, but you'd actually own a piece of the project. I mean, that's that's what the hope they're going for. I, I had two other other questions. In, in the, um, there was a proposed revisions to the rule on safety of hydroelectric dams. Does that, are any of our dams um, PUC jurisdiction? Yes. So yes, do we have and and the rules that's the changes that are going on are largely um, being fueled by the fact that uh, the dam Vermont dam safety program doesn't really have any teeth in order to say, hey, Hardwick Electric, your East Long Pond dam needs this, go do it. They can say hey, your East Long Pond Dam looks like it might need this and you ought to consider it. That's about what they can do now. So they're trying to align all the standards as the first step because right now, dams that are under FERC jurisdiction and dams that are under public utility uh, commission jurisdiction go by different standards. And our Wolcott Dam, for example, is under a different set of rules than all our other dams because it makes power and they don't, which is a trigger under which uh, they determine which set of standards you have to go by. So one of them is basically, uh, the Wolcott one is basically Army Corps of Engineer 
standards, which is what I think they all should be. Um, and then the state's dam safety program is slightly different, but the issue is they don't have any teeth and they wanna get teeth. And the first thing in the process of getting those teeth is getting us all on the same standard. So Eli and I are actually working on this to make sure, and I actually have some follow-ups um, with Jeff Tucker. Have all you, I don't think I've had you guys meet Jeff. He's our engineer, dam engineer at uh, Dubois and King. And I'm getting him all the most recent uh, dam safety manuals, which the actually the dam safety, the Vermont dam safety engineer his name is Ben Green, and he was an engineer for Weston and Sampson before he went to the state, and he did all our dams. So all the information is stuff that came right from him. And he's a really good guy. So I need to get all that to Jeff to review to determine whether or not we have concerns in what the state may or may not say, hey, now you have to do this or now you have to do that for hundreds of thousands of dollars at a pop that we don't have. So trying to head that all off at the pass. So, so this potentially has significant implications for us. Yes. So, so if we could have regular updates on this, because it sounds like we may be looking at some large costs at the same time, we do want the dams to be safe. Yep. Um, okay, that was one of my questions. The other was um, on what constitutes renewables. Um, any further updates or I would say progress on nukes being included as renewables? Well, I mean, it's certainly one of the points that we made in our comments to the department as they approached the res review. Um, Ken, I don't know if you have more to add there. I mean, it's biomass is even getting put into question at this point, but. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would say that conversation's yet to come. We we raise it every opportunity we get that we need to be talking about clean energy, not renewable energy, carbon carbon free, um, and refocusing that way. I'd say we're getting mixed results in the legislative legislative conversations. Um, some sympathy, but not a lot of interest in moving. At least at this point, um, the DPS is more open when I talk to the staff there, they understand that we're, if we go to 100% clean energy standard, um, there are pretty significant cost implications unless you bring other resources into the mix. So I, I think it'll be part of the broader conversation that happens, but it's, it's very slow at this point. Is, um, is Renewable Energy Vermont opposing? Oh, Isn't clearly, it? yes. They're, they're all about they're solar. all about solar. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the hurdle we have to overcome. And we're, I mean, it's similar to the hydro conversation. We, we beat the drum on that. We have been for, for five or six years now pointing out that it doesn't make any sense to be increasing the renewable energy standard and then curtailing the amount of hydro we produce. And we're just now starting to see some traction from that. I, I've used the nuclear conversation in kind of the same vein. It's, we're going to have to keep raising it over and over and over in three or four years from now, we may get some traction. Is, is, that, is that something we should be raising? I mean, should we be talking to our representatives? Um, I, I think it certainly is good when you get the opportunities and it makes sense in a conversation. Um, in all honesty, the whole House Energy Committee is turning over this session. There was so much turnover in the legislature that we don't we don't really know who the key players are going to be at this point. It'll probably be another month before we know who we, re we really need to focus on. Um, but to the extent you have opportunities, it never hurts to raise the issue locally. Uh, as distinguished from the Energy Caucus. Yeah, I mean, the, the chair of House Energy is retired. Um, I think two thirds of the committee either got defeated or didn't seek reelection. So there's going to be a whole musical chairs once the new session starts. So just renewable energy Vermont. I mean, is a it's a solar. It's not just solar, but it's essentially a solar industry organization representative. I mean, I assume that 
PUC sees them in that context? Mm. No? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> to yeah. some degree, yes. I think the, the regulators and the folks that are in the business understand what Renewable Energy Vermont is and that they're solar focused. I don't think the legislature makes that distinction. So when they're when they're talking in the state house and doing their presentations, they are viewed much more as a representative of the renewable community, um, and more a consumer advocate than the utilities are. So it's it's a that's challenge. How, that's how we wound up with net metering the way we have it. Yeah. I mean, I remember when TJ was at DPS <laughs> before he went to VEPSA and sitting in on some of those meetings and and the, the guys from the solar developers were just spinning a tail <laughs> okay um anything else if not we should move on it's uh it's almost five twenty-five. sarah thank you thanks sarah you're welcome thank you which takes us to ken and ken I'm going to let uh, Ken Santamore go into the details here, um, but we, we wanted to talk to you about the advanced metering infrastructure project and kind of where we are today. Uh, a few things have moved in the last uh, two weeks, so we can bring you up to date on that. Uh, and I think before we get into details on kind of the financing side of it, uh, I'll have Ken spend a few minutes just uh, bring in kind of level setting and making sure we are on the same page as far as the project itself. So, Ken, you want to take over? Okay. I mean, I guess probably just starting with a recap of, you know, what it is that we're, that we're trying to do over the last uh, three plus years, um, you know, building a fixed network throughout your service territory that will perform um, certain functions around um, your meters and, uh, any types of technical measurements you want to take um, on your customer end of the system. So essentially a, you know, wide area network that's going to return various quantities from your customer meters um, back to a um, data unit that will upload all of the data, all the readings, 15 minute readings, and that could be kilowatt hour consumption, uh, reactive energy, uh, demand information, voltage, et cetera, in uh, 15 minute increments to the head end, uh, which would feed into a meter data management system. Uh, so essentially, you would have a collection of information from each of your customers instead of that one energy reading that, by and large, you get now. Um, so, in a nutshell, that's what we're that's what we're talking about. I think we had gone over that in a prior meeting, so I don't really want to take a you know a bigger, deeper dive into that. But um, essentially, that's the way you can think of it, and. Uh, we have been uh, working with Aclara to hammer out the contract language and working with uh, the legal team to um, get the PUC filing in order uh, so that we can get their approvals there. We're also involved in trying to... Um, get grant monies uh, from the state that they were awarded recently. Uh, Ken will have more information on that as we move forward with the discussion. But um, at this point, we are working on a an RFP that the uh, uh, Department of Public Service has issued uh, in response to uh, those grants. So we're currently coming up with our responses for that that are due November 30th. Um, so Ken, I know you've got a lot that you want to add with that. So I'll throw it back over to you for that purpose. Ken, if you can, um, Ken Nolan, if you can kind of give the, the further back history of 
um, some of the stuff driving this, that would be valuable, I think, as well. For example, uh, the regulator is saying, well, you're all just too small to do a project like this. And, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. what this really means showing them and getting something like this done back in that level of history is what I'm asking for. Thanks. Sure. sure. So, so as Ken described, we've been doing, we've been looking at this for a little over three years. Um, the conversation before that really focused on, um, all of the other, all of the non-VEPSA member utilities put advanced metering infrastructure in back in 2009, 2010, uh, as part of the federal money that came out back then, the ARA funds uh, that came out right after the financial crisis. Um, so all those utilities got 50% off. They decided to put the metering in and the state regulators became very enamored with that technology. Um, so utilities like Green Mountain Power, Burlington Electric started doing time of use rates. They started doing particular rates for certain appliances, um, electric vehicles being the main one. Um, Efficiency Vermont got a data feed from those utilities of all the 15 minute data and was able to use that in targeting efficiency measures. And so over time, we started getting more and more pressure with, hey, you know, customers and other utilities have access to this information and technology. They had you know, web presentment that people could go and look at their usage. Um, and that kind of ra has ratcheted up over the last eight or nine years. Uh, it really came to a head last year in the legislature uh, when the state essentially decided they were going to promote electric vehicles and put money into it um, and, and try to force the utilities to provide rate incentive that caused people to switch from fossil, uh, from gasoline powered cars. Uh, to electric vehicles. So in the transportation bill last year, there was a specific requirement put in place that all electric utilities offer either a whole home time of use rate or a specific electric vehicle rate and have that available to customers by the end of 2024. And that was the first time that the state really put a requirement in that I don't, I don't know how you can meet it without having some kind of advanced metering in place. Um, I mean, technically you can do time of use rates with mechanical meters, but it requires physically changing the meter on the house of anyone who wants to have that rate. So in, in order to offer that time of use rate or electric vehicle rate to all customers, you, you really have to have this technology. Um, so that's where we are today. I mean, I, we, we started this conversation before that bill passed, but I, I don't see now how we can go forward without having the meters in, in hand. And um, could I just ask a question, um, Ken? The, in the write-up, I saw the listing of all the benefits and which showed the functionality. I wasn't clear that it, that it had this additional functionality of of measuring down to individual appliances or sub meters. And it, is it coming in with that functionality? Is that how it's spec'd right now? No, the, the, the meters themselves are recording at the home, at the home level. Yeah. Um, so how would this, how would this allow us to do, is it a bolt on additional expenditure to have the functionality to say, that that's going into your vehicle, that's a different rate or the, yeah, or so would, it, would it force you into just time of day, which might be the way to skin the cat, I don't know. Yeah, so the meters would allow the time of time of use rates. Mm -hmm. um, the, the next question becomes, can you connect to the in-home charging? So, so the other aspect of this is the vehicles that are being charged in the home have their own, uh, most of them at least have their own level two charger. And those chargers communicate with the manufacturer uh, over the home Wi-Fi. So it, it, it is add-on functionality, but it's possible to gather that data from the, 
the manufacturer of the charger um, as to how much energy the vehicle used and you and put that in as part of the inputs to the meter data management system. But we're going into this right now, assuming that we'll want to offer uh, time of use rates to customers as the way to meet the statute. That's got it. That's, honestly, that's that'll be the cheapest way to do it. Yeah, great. I understand. Thank you. Uh, so as Ken described, we've gone through an RFP process, um, had all the members participate in that. We ended up choosing a Clara as the vendor. We've spent over a year negotiating the contract with a Clara. Um, we are down as of last week. We essentially have reached agreement. We're going through both their attorneys and ours are going through the contract right now to make sure we haven't missed anything or have any last nits that uh, that jump out. So I expect we'll be in a position to sign that contract shortly after Thanksgiving. Um, we're also about to close on a specific uh, construction loan for this project. Uh, VEPS is working with Community Bank to borrow uh, $4 million that will be targeted to this project to use for working capital. And I'll get into why we need that in a second. Um, we're exchanging, the lawyers there are exchanging documents. We're down to, I think, two points left in literally like how the funds are going to flow. We're, which, what revenue gets deposited in the escrow account, how it's taken out, that sort of thing. Um, but we've agreed on the loan terms or just operationally, we're trying to make sure that the bank's comfortable with the collateral and how it's gonna, gonna pass. Um, and also as Ken described, uh, the DPS was given $8 million for advanced metering uh, out of the general fund appropriation last year. We spent most of the summer trying to shake that money loose. Uh, they they were very slow to start the grant process, uh, but we got the uh, the paperwork last week um, laying out what the criteria are. Um, was pretty happy with how it came out. They basically regurgitated the criteria we said they should apply. Uh, it appears from the document that they're they took our request seriously and they've designed the grant to really meet the targets that we had put out. Um, so that that application is due on November 30th. Uh, the DPS purposely made it a quick turnaround because they wanted to be able to target the money toward sho shovel ready projects, uh, which ours is the only one I'm aware of that's shovel ready. Um, so we were clear with the legislature and with the department that we wanted a 50% cost share. Um, so we're looking to put in an application for $5.2 million, which would be half of the total project cost. Um, feel pretty confident we'll get that um, on the back end. Um, but, but that grant is reimbursable. So the way it's structured is once the department gives their award, um, that allocates the money, but the utility would need to spend, um, oh. make an expenditure first, and then apply to get 50% of what you spent back. So it puts us, puts us in a position of either members having to pay and then we cut them a check back or VEPSA needs to carry that cost on our books while we're waiting for the department to fund their 50%, which is why we're setting up some working capital. Um, so we, we can cover the cost, make pay the invoices and then get the reimbursement and only bill the member for their share uh, once we've kind of all the funds have washed their way out <laughs> and we get the revenue back from all the other sources. Um, we've also set up with community bank, so it's it's initially a working capital, um, but we've made clear with them it's a it's a ten year loan that we would be borrowing from them, so that any member who wanted to use VEPSA as their ultimate financing vehicle could do that. 
So we would basically turn the capital cost into a monthly charge um, as part of your VEPSA invoicing over the 10 year period. Okay, did I miss it? The drum roll for the interest rate. <laughs> <laughs> so as of yesterday, the interest rate's five and a half percent. Ouch. For a public utility, that's a lot of money, right? It is. That's like sounds like the 1980s or something. Yeah. And what's the uh, re reimbursement uh, uh, anticipated reimbursement schedule from the state? I mean, I'm just looking at the, the funding costs for the uh, operating capital. I'm not sure I understand the question. So, so the operating capital needs to be borrowed. Yep. And what, do you have any idea what the reimbursement schedule is from the state? Uh, you know, is it 30 days from submission of invoice? Or, I mean, from submission of payment? Do they pay in 60 days? I mean, because the that can really start accumulating on 5 million bucks. Yeah. So we're still, it's one of the questions we post to them. Their initial draft of, of the solicitation they put out anticipated quarterly reporting and implied it would be quarterly payments. We have requested that they make that uh, monthly invoicing with, I mean, the, the, we're dealing with the state, so it could be 30 to 60 days, but we wanna be in a position where we're invoicing them every month and then getting reimbursement on the state schedule coming back. Um, but initially the document they put out implies, it's not stated, but it implies it would be quarterly uh, re reporting and description of the cost, which would imply that it's quarterly invoicing. Okay, because I, I didn't see the the uh, financing costs in the spread. That's probably in there, but I didn't see that in there for the operating capital based on the quarterly payments. Yeah, it's not in there. Vince. That's what. That's the question on the interest rate. We oh. we don't. What Ken's going to give us now, which we didn't have in the write up. Write up was great, but it didn't have that financing costs so we see the total cost after financing yeah right we're in the same place yeah and honestly we've got so there's three ways that that each member can finance this how they desire right we have some who have enough cash on hand that they want to just pay the invoices so we'll basically make the payment to the vendor and we'll simultaneously invoice the state and the member to minimize the financing costs on them. There are others who have already indicated they'd prefer to borrow the money themselves because as a municipality, it's possible or likely that you can borrow money cheaper than we can. Um, and those who want to do it, same thing. They they can borrow the money to, to cover it and we'll, we'll invoice both at the same time. Um, for those who want to use us as a financing entity will be in a position to do that, but the interest is the five and a half percent. The USDA has some very low interest rate funding available for projects exactly like this. Yeah. If, if you can, if you can get into their queue, um, right. just my experience with USDA is it's really tough uh, to get them to commit. Um, but I, I agree. I mean, I think with the IRA funding as well, there may be an opportunity there to to do something as well. And so, North, Northern Borders has a lot of money, uh, and they work with USDA a lot. And if you get their approval, it, it kind of <laughs> short circuits the the access. I mean, it helps the access so, in that case. So Ken, um, it looks like we could start with our worst case financing cost at five and a half percent. And then as Vince is pointing out, you know, we could then try to find other ways to try to reduce our cost. But that's not insignificant. I'm, I'm, I'm reading on page three that after the grant, the Hardwick electric cost is 1.8 million. Uh, so, so, so there's two parts to this. this just, mm -hmm. I was concerned this confusion would happen. So um, the spreadsheet that I think was sent in the packet as well shows that there, there's a, a year one cost, which is the capital for all the hardware, the installation, getting the system set up. 
And that cost actually for that's my dog. Sorry. Uh, for Hardwick, that gross cost pre-grant uh, is about one point two five million. And then, as we're going through this, we've assumed at least a forty percent. Trying to be conservative because there were some other utilities trying to get access to this grant money as well. So we assumed a 40% grant in the spreadsheet. That would get you your one cost down to about 775,000. The way you get from 1.2 million to 1.8 million uh -huh. is the 1.8 includes the annual cost over the 15 year life of the project. So it's it's oh, a year okay. one capital I'm cost not, plus the ongoing looking. o and Okay, I'm not used to looking at projects yeah, I'm looking. I'm used to looking at the capital cost of a project. Yeah, I, okay. I was so concerned the, that the way that was put together would be confusing. But I'm a little nervous about just looking at the spreadsheet year one because are there any sort of follow on? I th I think of the cost. What's the cost to implement this program? And uh, and your, is year one is it all done after year one or are there project implementation? And I don't mean operation. <laughs> executing the project is it all captured in year one or is there any floating over into year two yeah uh i mean we we've assumed it will all happen in year one but honestly okay. that year one cost could be spread over okay 12 to 18 if it months slides, so if it slides that just gets you a little more cushion what so what so what's your position then is it's more like one and a quarter million we have to yeah, and I, I think the actual cash outlay will be a little bit less than that, um, because in the one and a quarter million, we have assumed, um, for example, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in cost to actually install the meters. Mm -hmm. So that's reflected on the on the cost projections as an actual expense, to the extent that you use your internal crews to install the meters. That's essentially a sunk cost. Um, so it won't be cash out the door. It will be labor that you're putting into people putting the meters in instead of doing something else. Instead of doing something else. That's probably a good, that's a good thing to ask for. It's probably good practice to consider it a, uh, a cost of the project. Okay. So, so for, I want to stop talking to see if others have questions, but I think then we then we we apply the five and a half percent worst case financing cost to that lower number so it's not a hundred thousand dollars a year of interest it's a little less than that yeah but it's still a lot the the projection i have if you take the yeah total project cost back out the grant component and then turn it into a 10-year payment you're looking at about eighty six hundred dollars a month in financing costs for hard for Hardwick's project. When you say financing costs, you're talking principal and interest or just interest? That would be principal and interest. Yeah, that would you wouldn't you, you wouldn't include principal, would you, Lynn? I don't think you would. Well, I I, th I think it's it's yeah, it's different, it, different it's factor. it's the it's the it's the yeah, rather than getting hung up in ter terminology, it's the nut that we need to meet every month. Right. Yeah, from a sort of a cash flow basis. Okay. So it'd or, be about eighty six hundred a month to cover the the capital component, and then there's an annual ongoing. Uh, let's see, pull up Hardwick share here. It's the carrying cost. Correct. And the the two point seven six years. Uh, includes all the costs, the the break, the uh, ca positive cash flow threshold. Seven years. What two point seven? What number are you talking the, about? Where did he's it on sit? page? He's on page three. Um, that's yeah, just I know, but I just don't see two point seven. That's why I, I might. Have, I'm going on memory, so that yeah, I'm, it is. It's. I'm looking on the screen right now. It's two point seven six. Wow. <laughs> but that's a terrible. Pro that's not a good thing. And, and that doesn't include financing costs. What we? Okay. I'm I'm sorry. <clears throat> is this is this what we're talking? What you're calling page three? Yeah, the table. It's it's the second line from the bottom in the tables. What they're talking about. 
Oh, 2.7. I'm sorry. That's 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 cash flow okay. positive. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, sorry, I was I was looking at the top and saying I don't see 2.76 million. <laughs> but but again, that that's that's without financing costs. Correct. I, the the fact is, without 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 the grant, this makes absolutely no sense. For and that's, oh, yeah, that's for damn sure. <laughs> that's what I've been I telling mean, it's, the it's, state it's, it's, for years. I, I mean, I had all kinds of questions about the assumptions that are in here because then whether there were sensitivity analyses run. Oh. And I and I there's a part of me that really wants to know that, but if this is something that we have to do because we're going to have to comply with other programs then then whether or not it makes financial sense is really beside the point although although, unless, although it's good for us to know how bad it is i mean it, we, yeah. need to, we definitely um, need to wrap our minds around and say how bad is this unless i mean because i i uh i'm old enough in this business to remember utilities implementing time of use rates without nearly the technology that we're talking about um and um i guess the question is because i i completely agree with ken you know if if you do it meter by meter would it be possible to implement a, a time of use rate or an electric vehicle rate whatever we want to call the damn thing um And say to a customer, if you want this, you have to pay for the new meter that's going to allow us to record the information so that we can bill you accordingly. Um, and because if that's the case, then the numbers really do make a big difference. I mean, there there is obviously there there's a lot of information that we could get and 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 I've probably been talking more than anybody about redesigning air rates because I think that that they just they in my gut they're not the right structure they're not um, data driven uh, I'm sorry uh, so they're not data driven no they're not and and so this this gives us data um but I I do wonder what sort of assumptions were made um the benefit of, of meter operations i mean so is this eliminating the cost of a meter reader what what what's in there no it's so, so the the way the correct me if i go wrong here ken but my understanding the, the way the benefits were determined it's a list of benefits that were identified um both in the utilities that have done this previously and others around New England that Jackie Lammerhurt, the consultant who did this work, has, has worked with in the past. So she did a first run through based on what she's seen elsewhere. And then she sat down with the staff in each of the utilities. And I'm, I'm not sure if it's you, Mike, or somebody on your staff, and went through each line item to say, sanity check. Do you think this this benefit is real for your particular utility or not. And so there are some utilities that threw out whole buckets of benefits and just said, no, I don't believe this. It's not going to happen. Um, so it's it's tailored somewhat, somewhat to a conversation with each utility and what they, they thought was realistic. Um, typically, the meter operation is we have not seen any staff reductions or anything like that, but there is some reduction in truck trips and fuel and you know how often you need to buy a vehicle. Uh, you don't have to send people out to do check reads, for example, when people move in and out. So that's really most of what's reflected in there. Um, out it, it, it was down to that granular level, Lynn, of, of possibilities that she had in the list. And I probably chopped out 30 to 35 percent of what she had for possibles on that list. So I'm I'm pretty happy with our numbers. But Mike, you're really gonna have to cut people. I mean, this is the only way this goes away is there's fewer people on the payroll than today. Is that well, we, we won't lose a body because we still have to have a meter reader and we only have one. So if there's a yeah. Well, if there's a meter test that has to be done, he has to go do it. If there's a check read that has to be done or whatever customer interaction, he 
we still but, need that person. So but, is that a full, but is that a full time job? Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be a full time job, but we only have one to play with. So it's not a cute. If we had 10 of them, it would be a lot different amount of money and a lot different discussion than us with our only one on the payroll. Well, he or she can be the one to put in the new meters, and then we save the hundred fifty thousand. <laughs> uh, no, right. No, so we're can't. we're actually in the no, they we're can't. in the second. So we'll wind group. up with a situation like we had elsewhere, where meters were not installed properly. Oh yeah, let's not go there. <laughs> um, well, somebody's got to put them in. But yeah, so <laughs> that that uh, us not being in the first wave of utilities, are we in the second wave, uh, Santa Moore? or the third wave? Um, right now it's still undetermined, but yes, you are um, in the second. Okay, so we have, about, otherwise. we have about an extra year uh, after the first group goes, where my intention is to purchase meters ahead on oh, no. other days or you know whatever days when there's it's raining out and the crews are inside. They don't have a good project. Hey, you can go change meters all day and knock off 200 or whatever. Um, so I'd like to get as many of them done to knock off as much as that 150,000 that's in the equation as possible. And I think we can get a lot of it. I, I, I think it's important to remember that it's, this is an essential project. I mean, it, it needs to be done it, and time of use rates are, for a whole bunch of different reasons are, are just so important and they're dependent on data and the PUC is going to may be important Vince you're making an assumption here yeah. that 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 um the experience is by no means that 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 they do anything about load shifting and we don't know how variable oh. our costs are on a time of use basis so don't assume that time That's, of use rates are going to do much of anything for I'm, us. I'm not assuming time of use. You're, you're absolutely right. And uh, incentives uh, are only, they're, they're as productive as they, as they are, which is not completely. And, but uh, we still need the data uh, to manage any, any kind of grid transition, any kind of smart grid. We need the data, we need to be able to control things. And uh, Without it, it just ends up being a mechanical system. This is data. We're not controlling anything. As if I understood what Ken was saying, this is not giving us the ability to, to attach to individual appliances. For example, if we wanted to do a com combination water heater and um, AC or- Yeah, I'm not talking about appliances. I'm, not, I'm, I'm talk, talking about the individual customer. And, and there, is, there is control cap uh, cap capability with, the, with, the, with those meters. Okay, um, I, I want to come back. I want to okay. come back to the benefits, the quantification of benefits. Because when I see benefits, looking at fifteen years and talking about seven hundred and thirty dollars, I mean that that's a level of <laughs> I don't I don't even know what that means. Um, the the or what's included in meter operations versus field operations versus smart grid. Um, whether there were any scenarios done. I mean, I have no idea how robust these numbers are. And what worries me is that even with the grant, given how thin it is with grant funding, this may be a, a something that we're losing money on. Now, maybe the data that we get is valuable enough that it's worth spending that money to get that information, but we don't know that because we, these, I have no idea about anything about these numbers, how they were obtained, what the assumptions are, what the variability in them, whether there were scenarios run, how sensitive anything is to anything else. And, and, and that troubles me on, on making this kind of an investment. I mean, I'd love to see the data, that, that, but that's, I agree with you, Lynn. Um, what is the decision that we need to make? Because, I mean, as far as I can tell, Ken Nolan, we have to go along with this. Even though I think the numbers look nutty. 
I don't think we have to go along with it as long as there's a mechanical solution for specific users. Like you're saying, 2024, we have to do some kind of special uh, analysis of utility rates for people who have electric cars. There's probably a mechanical solution for those particular people, which is probably maybe 5% of our users as opposed to all of our users. And if I, it sounds like the payback, if I'm hearing right, is around three years plus for whatever that we're doing here. Which no. I don't know. no, the payback is seven no. years. Seven, seven years. years. And it's that's seven I, I, years that, without interest. So that, I, to me, that's, that's insane. <laughs> well, seven I year mean, payback on technology is just not, doesn't relate. It, technology it, changes so quickly. Uh, if we waited three years, it'd be a totally different scenario. One of the questions that I have is, is this is a 15 year analysis. Is that what the life of this system actually is? I mean, I'm used to public utility investment where you're talking things have a life of 25 years, 50 years. And, and you know, 15 years isn't much. So, I mean, if you're looking at something with a life of 30 years, Plus, looking at, at a, at a seven-year payback is, is not an outlandish thing for a utility. Um, looking at a seven-year payback on a 15-year life is a different beast. And of course, that, is, that doesn't have the interest cost. What happens to that once the interest cost goes in? I'd have to run that number. I haven't done that specifically. And I I also think, correct me if I'm wrong, Ken, this payback period assumed the 40% grant level. So so we'd we'd yeah, have to put right. the interest in and we probably want to reflect the the 50% grant, which I think is much more likely as I sit here tonight. Oh, oh, that's good. Good. I think you'd end up in the same, roughly the same place, but we'd have to work the number to, yeah. to make sure. I, I, I want to go back, though, to, 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 to Nat's question, which is, what do you need from us at this point? What are we being asked to commit to, to sign on to? Are we going to be talking again? You know, is this going to be a back-to-back -back contract with, with whatever <laughs> VEPSA signs? Yeah. In which case, <laughs> you'll forgive me, but we need to see it. Yeah. And, we, and it would be really nice to see it before VEPS signs it, because who knows, we might see something in it. Um, you also talked on the loan, which I guess we may or may not do, uh, that there were issues. What is the collateral? Uh, the collateral is basically our contracts with the members saying you'll pay the bill and a cross collateral with other money that we have stored with Community Bank. There's no no attachment. And we were pretty specific on this. There's no attachment of the the AMI assets because the presumption is that you will own the meters. So there's no way for the the bank to kind of reach through us to get to you to. Get so the it's not it's non recourse to to us. I mean, you you'll come after us if we don't pay. But there there is a provision in the contract between us and the members that we're still working through. Uh, which essentially requires an assignment of the contract to the bank if we default. So they take they basically would take VEPS's place in the contract with you if we don't pay our bills. So there's a direct agreement. Sorry, basically, that. basically, basically, you would be asking for us to enter into an agreement with the bank saying the bank can step in and take over the contract if you default. The, the contract between us and the bank and the contract between VEPSA and you would have that assignment provision built into so we, it. So there'd be no privity of contract between us and the bank? Not directly. Well, either there is or there isn't. There's no such thing as indirect privity. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't. Um, yeah, I, I need to put you with Mr. Ellis so you two can talk. Through I, I, no, I, I would very obviously. much like, I mean, I guess one of the things that concerns me is these things are being negotiated without our counsel. Um, and it, it's no reflection on Bill. And, 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 and I know that VEPS is, is looking out for its members' interests, but 
we're still separate entities and 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 yeah. we need to protect our interests and if things are set in stone so that there's no room if we see a, an issue um then then we're screwed because because i guess one of the things is that there is this grant money available there's no assurance that the grant money is going to be available down the road so that if at some point in the future we wanted to do this it's going to cost us a lot well i mean the the tech the tech the technology costs may have come down presumably they would come down that's that's generally the case yeah. but 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 we're but we're going to lose the, the grant money and that's 50 percent, and then it's not likely that things are going to come down that much in 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 a few years yeah so so a couple of points so we we're trying to manage four separate contracts and get them in alignment um definitely agree the member contracts um will be will be <laughs> to you they're 90% done to our satisfaction. And obviously you guys are going to need to review it and provide comments. And we need to make the round robin so we keep those consistent across all the members. So we're trying to get far enough along with the Clara and with the bank and get the terms in the member contract that they're internally consistent before we start sharing everything around. Uh, but that will be imminent. Um, on the cost side, the one caution I would make is I expected, as you described, for the technology cost to come down between, for example, 2009 when the other utilities did it and when we're looking at it in 2022, I would have expected cost to decrease significantly. That's not what we've seen. We've actually seen the cost stable and now with inflation actually going up. What what's happened is they've embedded more and more functionality into the meters for the same price, essentially. Okay. It's like Apple. Yeah, so you you, <laughs> you keep getting more stuff, but you're paying the same amount for it. Um, it. You're right. I mean, we we fought very hard to get the eight million dollars out of the legislature. Spent a fair amount of political capital. Um, I think this is a one time deal. Um, if we don't take advantage now, I don't see us getting the funds again in the future, um, which is partly why VEPSA is putting together the application for all 11 members, even though most of you haven't signed it. anything. We want to preserve that money and, and figure we can always negotiate with the department to do something else if we have to, but we need to get the funds initially and make sure they're locked up. Uh, so. We're planning on the 30th to submit a grant application for everybody, assuming that they'd be part of our project. So we, we at least get that money. Yeah. So to go back to the this whole loan thing and then the contract between BEPSA and, and the um, member, if we were to finance this on our own rather than using the community bank financing, um, two questions. How does that affect, then, then we wouldn't be part of the assignment then presumably to the bank. Correct. That would be a difference in the form of contract. The other piece, sorry. Um, what's the timing on this? In other words, when when would we need to be borrowing by? Because that that's clearly affects I mean, for example, if we're talking about financing, um, what, $600,000 or something along those lines, that yeah. that puts us over the threshold, doesn't it, Mike, where we need to get yeah. involved. And, and all of that takes time. Um, yeah. So, so the, the steps, not these probably aren't exactly in sequential order, but I think they're fairly close. So we've got the contract with the Clara that VEPSA needs to sign. We've got the the agreement with the bank. We're going to have to close at some point in the next month, month and a half. Um, we have the contract with the member that has to be in place. Um, that has to be done with all eleven of you, and ideally with the same contract that everybody's signing with 
carve out provisions, depending on whether you pay for yourself or you borrow from us, there'll be you know, kind of off ramps, depending on how you do the financing. The next step um, is to file with the P Public Utility Commission. So under a docket 7307, which is the AMI approval originally when the other utilities did it, uh, the Public Utility Commission required that any utility implementing AMI has to make a filing with them and get approval to do so. Um, so we're we're preparing right now that filing uh, to submit and get approval to move forward with the VEPSA central project. Um, that will be the next thing. Then we deploy on that first group of utilities, all of which have indicated you know they they want to move yesterday. Um, so there are four, it's Swanton, Northfield, Orleans, and Enosburg. Um, I'll want to go as soon as we can get this locked up. Then we'd be coming back to the second level, which as Ken described, you're now, right at, at the moment, you're in that second group to go forward. Um, only when that second group starts to go forward, which is about a year out, where we have to place meter orders and start procuring equipment, that's when you'd have to decide on what you're going to do with the financing and have the the money in hand if that's what you if you want to finance it yourself. And and this this loan with Community Bank um, does it have prepayment penalties? In other words, it can can it be refinanced? It it does not have any prepayment penalties. And so that's five and a half fixed. Five and a half fixed for, for 10 years. For 10 years. We borrow, we draw on it as we need to. It's like a construction loan on it's the front like, end. It's a construction loan with a flip to term. Correct. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Keep it going. So, Lynn, um, in, in, in the interest of moving through this, um, I think all of us agree that this is something in our future and that no, and sure, the sure. team, well, put it this way, sometime in my lifetime, Nat, not yours. How about that? <laughs> oh, that, was, that was harsh. Maybe. <laughs> See, we're thinking through different lenses. And this is a guy with COVID right now, so I'm not feeling all that alive. Ooh, but, yeah. uh, but I will tell you, the... I, we definitely, as a group, I think, support trying to pull something together that we can be part of. But we also, as a group, have an obligation to know what we're getting into and what it means to pay payers. And so until we vote as a group, yes or no, thumbs up, thumbs down, we're kind of in the mode of, of, of getting comfortable really understanding the case that's being made. You know what are what are the benefits we're going to get, and then what are the costs for sure? And you've helped us tonight with the interest cost because we, we that's the element we didn't see until now. But also, I'm I would like to suggest some some next steps and maybe build on what you were saying, Lynn, which is the the savings are so critical to us mm -hmm. that we really I think we should go through and understand. Because I have trouble seeing, you know, almost half a million dollars of savings. Yep. You know, it's, I, I don't know. I, we really need to get granular. And Mike's already done it. So maybe as we see it at the level Mike saw it, we'll all say, yeah, 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 that's great. We're with you. But I, it's a big enough thing and it's hard enough to understand if you're not firing people and you're not really chopping things away, how you get to the saving. So that would be one. And then the other would be the investment. Um, I think I'd like to encourage you, Ken, unless I'm totally clueless on what you guys do in the utility world. I think if you're gonna start making an investment case and talking about IRRs and returns, the investment needs to be the investment. Operating costs shouldn't be in that page. Yep. There's something totally different. Your net, your net impact every year going forward will be netting your operating costs from your savings and keep them there, don't put them in the investment. Just give us a clear view of the, of the upfront investment and then we can say what's the next savings. And that's a more traditional in my experience way to look at a, a case. And that's in the spirit of just getting us all comfortable. We know what we're looking at. So 
if you're comfortable, because you've got to fiddle with it anyway, like you said, take the 50% grant. That's going to be a plus. Work, find a way to work in the interest cost. That's a minus. Get us into some net picture so we can really see net of net of financing. What does it look like? And then I, I'd imagine, Vince, what we can do is then we on our own can sensitize it for, gee, we really think we can borrow money at two and a half percent. How much does that help us? Um, but we got to look at it for what we know. What, how would anybody else build on that? Is that? I, I is agree that with that. I would like to. I think it is. Um, I, 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 I think we need to have a better sense. You know, we're, we're talking about going in for a rate increase in the not too distant future. And this conceivably could push us into an, another rate increase not too long after that. And I think we need to really, really understand what the benefits of this are. Uh, not, not just data, because that's, that's, that's not going to cut it with people who are living paycheck to paycheck, if that, um, and, and are going to see their electric bills go up. Um, we, we haven't discussed that at all. Well, and I, but I think Roger was asking, and I'm certainly asking for more granularity on what the benefits are, not, you know, seeing how these are broken out. If we're not going to have sensitivity analyses, at least, you know. Sounds like we should probably, if it's, scenarios. If, if it's workable, Ken and Ken, to get uh, Jackie connected with my board, maybe at a special meeting between now and next month, or maybe at next month's meeting. And have her do the same exercise with me that uh, with my board that she did with me. Yeah, I was going to suggest. I mean, Jackie has an actual spreadsheet that she ran through with Mike, and I, I think us getting you that spreadsheet and having her attend the meeting and talk it through is the way to to kind of move this forward. And well, you, at least we can knock that piece of the puzzle onto the table and look at it. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I mean, fifteen minute in. Uh, inputs from my house are not very interesting for Hardwick Electric. <laughs> uh, that, 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 if I just have a two part technical question that relates to the value. Uh, one is, does a 15 minute, I mean, in aggregate, 15 minutes is going to be fine for the utility. You know, maybe within a circuit, it may be fine. On an individual basis, that may not be fine at all. I mean, people's demand can go up and down by you know, 10 kilowatts in it's, 15 minutes. But, tip, but typically uh, it's pretty standard to, in, 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 in the industry to look at an integrated period and-, and yeah. Right, I-, I, I, and, I, I and Sometimes I it's shorter, but 15 minutes is not unusual. Right, no, I, I realize that, but what I'm leading yeah. up to is, uh, is there, first of all, a lifetime of the system, and second of all, is the system capable of being upgraded to a finer uh, resolution of, of use. I mean, so, it, something yeah. I was going to share. I'm not, I don't want to cut you off, Vince, but something I was going to share earlier is when I was at Vermont Electric Cooperative about uh, 16 or 17 years ago, uh, we installed that power line carrier system there, which they've been using ever since their MI system. And they're saying now that it's obsolete and they want to go to a radio system such as what we're looking at now. So I, I've had this feeling since this discussion of, hey, what's the life of these systems? And I remember when, you know, digital uh, solid state electric meters first came into the industry. And, you know, we still have some, some of those out there cranking along no problem. And they're, they're 30 years old. So I've been under this well, yeah, 30 years, like Lynn, you're talking, you know, utility time is always, you know, you build it like a tank and run it till it's dead. <laughs> but based on this experience with uh, Vermont Electric Co-op and Washington Electric Co-op as well is saying their system is obsolete. And I th they went in at the same time. So I think the 15 years, you know, I don't like it, but I think that's a real number. And Green Mountain Power is talking about they, they did RF initially in 09, and they're talking now about a replacement system as well. 
I mean, I, I can't understand why there aren't any broadband. You know, I mean, obviously not everyone has broadband. So, but at some point, it's much simpler integration than why, having accumulators. Why, why, why were Hardwick and Lindenville designated? So RF is, is radio frequency? Yeah. And so the others are doing what? Yeah. yeah, so the the I originated that, Lynn, because I didn't like the price tag on the radio system. And I said, hey, we've only got two substations. We would only need two, perhaps even one, depending on the impedance of the system, uh, to run a power line carrier system. Hey, Clara, why don't you give us a price for a power line carrier? And Bill Humphrey, who was the general manager at Lindenville Electric at that time, also didn't like the price tag he was looking at for his utility. And uh, so we we had Ken uh, Santamore reach out to Clara and they worked up the power line carrier option for us. And it was basically the exact same money. So why would we go that route that we know is gonna have limitations in the future and not be able to be expanded on in the future? We said, okay, forget it. So everybody's doing radio frequency, and so that's yes. just that's ditch. I when I saw that, I didn't. I was I, I, I didn't connect the dots on the acronym. Okay, but that's what it was all about. Okay. So again, like, is there have they as Clara talked about possibility of uh, higher frequency data points? Yeah, th these systems generally come with residential, it's it's 15 minutes is the standard, but they have the ability to, to drop to five or one minute. The, the problem you run into is the bandwidth, obviously, on the RF. So the, the more frequent you're bringing data back, the, the more you're drawing on the system, and you may have to... Um, walk through how frequently you want the data coming back versus how many components are you bringing? Do you want kilowatt hours, KVARs, voltage? Um, there's a whole you know outage information, not so much the alerts that you get when the power goes out, but you can get reports every 15 minutes back. And, and you have to bring back all the data that you're asking the meter for on whatever frequency you set it. So you, you have to balance that as you're going, but they, they can go on a shorter time frame if you decide you want that. Which would add to the amount of data and increase our many, many, many terabytes by probably many more terabytes of data. Yeah. And that's gonna be handled by the vast staff that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, that, that let me think. another other question, like, what do we, where does it download to? Uh, how do we get access to it? Process. I mean, I, I know that's down the road, but um, no, actually, Ken Ken Santamore can speak to that. I mean, we are hosting it in a Microsoft Azure environment um, that Aclara uh, will be running because, as was just mentioned, staffing you know, is a, is an issue on both levels, VEPSA and uh, each of the members. Um, so it's, it's being hosted in a cloud environment. Um, and then each individual office will have access to the uh, slice of the MDM that contains their data. Which includes downloading for archiving, for example. Yeah, or downloading for whatever study you happen to be working on at that particular time. So essentially it would be, you could look at it as a, a large database at the, um, you know, the, the Azure data center. And then depending on what the the um, billing clerks are working on, or in the case of EPSA staff, whatever type of study they're undergoing, they would reach in for a subset of that data and uh, bring it down to a, a local database. In the case of the billing agent, it probably would just be individual records that they're retrieving. But in our case, a study case, it might be you know, a time period of data that they're looking at. So and and Beth, you can maybe you can answer this the integration with the accounting software. 
just like a, an, an SQL query that automatically pulls stuff over? Um, I don't I don't know that it's a SQL query, but I do know that um, our software provider has been integrated with Aclara for years, and it's actually their favorite vendor to work with. So pulling down the data for billing is going to be easy. Yeah, we, we have all the other member utilities are very jealous that we have SEDC for our provider. Uh, they are one of the, uh, to fill in a little bit more about what I know about that and, and discussing it with them, um, they are one of the uh, few providers that utilize multi-speak, which is a, a protocol that allows um, the ad hoc queries into each of the systems to uh, respond to the data needs. So that's how I understand from a 10,000 foot level, how a SEDC would be integrated uh, with them. Is there, are there any other questions? And, and so I, I guess the takeaways from this is that there isn't anything for us to do right now except to learn more. And that uh, someone's going to arrange either at our next meeting and Ken, that will be time enough or? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't feel that you guys need to move super quick on a decision. We, we just want to, Make sure we're walking down the path so you can get to the point of saying yes or no in a, in a timely manner. But if it takes a month or two, it's not a not a problem. Okay, and then we're on track as well for for the for the grant money. Yeah. So our expectation is to preserve the grant money. Uh, we're going to put in the application as though everyone is using our project. Get the money assigned, and then if we need to adjust, then we can negotiate with the department at that point. But the key right now is just to preserve the funding. So um, yeah, so I think I think it's a case of 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 having that discussion at our next meeting. Um, and to the extent that we could see data before then with more granularity, so that we can be intelligent and have an efficient meeting, that would be great. Yeah, my, my takeaways are to to get you the spreadsheet with the analysis that Mike went through, so you can see how we get to those numbers. Um, we'll get Jackie lined up to attend one the, your next trustee meeting. Um, and we'll redo the uh, year one capital costs and financing so that that's completely separate and you can see what the financing costs would do to it. And yeah, and, and, as well. and Ken, just to update that memo. I, I did, it was nice to have a, a memo in Word that you could look at everything together. If that's not too hard, just to drop all the new numbers in there. Yeah. This was very helpful. Are those your follow-ups, Ken? Nolan? Yep. Yep. Get the and switch. You have one more. Okay. You need to get you need to get us a con a copy of the contract. Yep. Okay. Contracts. Yes. I heard Lynn clearly. I want to see the Clara and your contract. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> So how, that could be very predictable, Ken. Hey, one one savings that you this this may be a savings or not, but obviously, all the work that's going into developing this, you know, is there's a certain cost attached to that. So if we assume that we're going to have to get AMI at some point or other, we just and we didn't do this, we'd have to go through it again. So there would be those development costs, contractual development costs, just other studies, stuff like that. I mean, it, it's, it is something. I mean, I don't know how much that would be, but I mean, you guys obviously, you know, it's a cost. I don't know how it's getting financed now by payments from the utilities to VEPSA for, to develop this or how that's working. Well, we all, we all, it's a joint action. You know, we're all working on it. We right. all shared Jackie Lemmerhurt of Lemmerhurt Consulting's costs. We're all sharing, you know, Mr. Right. Santamore has hundreds of hours into this at least, and uh, we share his costs. So yeah, we're definitely coming out ahead and we have some good brains working on this that, uh, you know, we simply wouldn't have if we were going it alone.
So anyone doesn't have anything else, we thank you, Ken's, uh, for this is this is very helpful, very helpful. Thanks for the time tonight. And Thanks, Ken. Wish you a thank happy you. Thanksgiving. You too. Take care. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks, nice, nice, Michael. I guess you're going too. What? No, no, I just, the both of them. Yeah, so the next um, item on the agenda is the audit. Looks good. Yeah, so if I can speak to that, mostly for Lynn. Um, so that, that uh, separate document, Lynn, in the review with Chris, was, uh, I believe Mr. Ambrosino identified it and uh, Roger really didn't like it. And it was all deemed to be either make it work and make it right or get rid of it. And making it work and making it right turned into just a book of nightmares. And I finally said, get rid of it and be done with it. So that's- Is that that's a good summary, Beth? Yes. <laughs> That's okay. that's the page with the circle on it under 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 GM two. Yeah, that's the actual yeah. chart. That's the only change to the audit is removing that thing. Is removing that? Yes. Yep. And everybody got their questions answered. Okay. It didn't make any sense. The chart didn't make any sense. Agreed. <laughs> it was labeled wrong, and then when they tried to fix it. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Lynn, when your numbers all even out in the bottom? They didn't reconcile. Balance. Reconcile. Thank you. He couldn't oh. get that to reconcile. And I said, get rid of it. So that's where we went. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, oh, is there a motion to approve? I move to approve the audit. The, the 2021 audit? 2021 no. audit. Is there a second? 20 and 21, right? Okay. This is just 21. Is it just 21? No. Yes. No. Oh, I'm sorry. This is. It's just 21. Just 21. Just 21. Yep. OK. And there was a second. Yes. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, uh, let's vote on the motion. All in favor? Aye. No one's opposed, so the motion carries. Have we hired them for the next year, Mike? Yeah, they're on contract for this year. And we're actually, um, I got after Steve Farman here in the last few days about getting on track for the December meeting presentation with all of you for the rate case. Yeah. and. Uh, Strategically, we're not sure just yet, but we may or may not want to expedite the 2022 audit uh, to utilize those numbers as our test year. Um, and we're working through that, but we'll, we'll have that nailed down before next month. But anyway, I talked to, or I briefly touched base with Chris, the auditor, and uh, about him expediting this. And he, he was, Pretty positive in his response, I would say, Beth, that we could yes. we could land with a useful tool if that's yes. going to be in our best interest in our rate case. Good. That takes us to the next item on the agenda, which is are the financial statements. Are there any questions or comments? I have one question. Nobody has anything else. Uh, it is on page, huh, what's well, the first page after the yellow page? Um, the can, can, uh, key indicator summary at the bottom, it has billing statistics. This is not a major thing, but why were the actual street lighting kilowatt hours so much more than the budget? It just, uh, it just seemed year to date, it just seemed very odd to me. I don't have an answer for that, but I'll get you one. Uh, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, it's just it just it just kind of popped out at me when I was looking at Absolutely. it. Absolutely. That was kind of weird. Um, I, I will share that um, historically before Hardwick Electric went to all LED lighting, outdoor lighting, uh, there was a tracking. We had two tracking lights 
One was a HPS, a high pressure sodium, and one was the newer LED style. And we used to track those to support our uh, monthly rental fees in our rates. So I don't know if that data got convoluted into this thing, but I'll just share that history that I'm sure that has something to do with this. Well, it's just weird because the sales revenue is almost identical between yeah. budget and actual, but the kilowatt hours is way different. And yeah. and this is a new section that I've added. So there may be a formula in yeah. there no, that I, I'm not got right, there, but I'll just, find it. It just seemed odd. So I'll was, find it. That was my question. Does anybody have anything else on that? If not, uh, that takes us to Brooke. Are you getting Brooke, Mike? Uh, you didn't get my email then. She's she's sick. Oh yeah. no. Yeah. Okay. Stomach. Her and her husband both have a stomach bug, and she's Good. been off her feet for the last three days, so she's not ready. Ah, uh, okay. I did not see that email. Did others get that email? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. When did when did you send it? Uh this morning, sometime late morning. Ah, uh, okay. I may have been. On a conference call, and just shortly recently. before your goats were yelling at me. Before what? Shortly before your goats were yelling at me. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't yelling. I wasn't yelling. The Not you. Were, your goats. The goats were yelling. Oh my goats! Yeah. That wasn't yeah. my goats. That was my dog. No, oh, this no, morning. I, yes. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't home. I wasn't home. I was at the doctor's. Um, they they were not happy about me being there. No, no, no. They wanted you to come over and say hi. That's the oh, that's, okay. Oh, they're they're not they're not watch goats. <laughs> um, they they they're very social, and if they see people, they it's like, hey, come here. Gotcha. Do something, scratch me, do something. I love goats. So, um, okay, um, that takes us to the general manager's report. So what I, I guess what I should say is uh, Beth was going, and I don't think this needs to be in an, in an, in an executive session. Uh, Beth was just going to lay out the uh, plan of where we are headed in public uh, with the select board in regard to our efforts that she's working on. Okay. Was that helpful or not? I'm, I'm intrigued. Ooh. I don't know what that means. <laughs> but I don't Did you say I, I, It doesn't it doesn't sound like it needs to to be um an executive. Okay. I mean it's it's not related to employment, it's not related to contract, it's not so yeah. No. No, so I I would I would say yes, that we can. But before we get on to that, does anybody have anything on the written report? I had one question. Um in the second paragraph, you said something about eliminating the LNS and I didn't know what LNS was. Yeah, that's our um, local network services. That's our cost, our transmission. We have two sets of transmission costs, the VTA, which is the bulk power. And then we all have, we also have the LNS, which is our transmission services from Green Mountain Power. And that's what I've been working on eliminating with this transmission line purchase and eventual okay. investment okay. into the yep. Morrisville water and light system. Yeah. I just didn't get the, the yep. jargon. I'd had a. Sorry. Um, and I, I just want to jump to the first paragraph where we talk about all these other utilities looking for rate increases. And I'm wondering if we should get ahead of our rate increase and do some PR to talk about what other people are doing so people know our rate increase is coming in terms of customers. Well, it was in the Gazette, so unless no. you want to put something on front porch forum, I think people. The, the select board was not surprised, and they weren't. Uh, they were relatively amenable and understood it. Their only comment was that they would rather have uh, a more frequent at, but lower interest rate. I mean, lower uh, uh, electric rate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think I think at some point, and and maybe the next time we meet with the select board, we can explain to them that that's just not the way utility rate making works. That that yeah. we only can go in for a rate increase when we need a rate increase, 
and we can't go in for a rate increase to keep to smooth out on a perspective right. what uh, what they might be. So that that um, uh, <laughs> an inflation adder. <laughs> Um, I, I had a, I had one question about um, <clears throat> the lineman um, leaving for VEC. Do we know why? Yeah, I, I chatted with him, um, and he didn't really give me he he told me he gave me answers that were in direct contradiction to the answers he gave me when I hired him about why he wanted to come here. So I concluded that he didn't want to talk about it. So what I did was uh, about a week after he gave his notice, I brought his partner into the office, the, his crew member that he works with every day and had a good chat with him. And he believes the main driver of Patrick leaving is that uh, Vermont Electric Co-op has a uh, combined time off. And so they bundle all your vacation all your sick everything into one yeah. it's all just time off and it is a, it is all an entitlement it's not a benefit so he gets like almost three times as much vacation going there as he gets with us because our for example our sick our sick time is accrued you're only allowed to accrue so much into your bank and then you lose it so and, and it's not a it's not an entitlement. It's a benefit. It's really a tool for us to provide or for an employee to utilize so that they have short term disability insurance is what it really replaces and was the intent of it when that all got set up. But I think it's primarily because he's got a young family and uh, he gets a lot more time off. So that's uh, really it's time off. It's financial. So it's, uh, my, my question was whether it was whether it was financial or, you know, a promotion. But it, it's not. But it's not his hourly rate because we're just slightly over them right now. So he's actually, you know, technically hourly is going to be making a little bit less, but he gets a lot more time off. Okay. So it's a quality of life thing. Okay. I just I I was just curious what that what that. Well, was. and a, and another thing that I will share that's that's a a thing for me is, you know, to put it bluntly, our uh, facilities for our line workers suck. You know, the building's a 1972 dilapidated mess, and he's going to now go work at a probably a $3 million one-year-old facility that is absolutely fabulous. So that would help me make that decision if I was him. All right. Any other questions? Now, so Beth was going to, unless some, someone has something else about from the written report, Beth was going to explain whatever she's going to explain. Can't hear you. We can't hear you. You're muted, Beth. I don't I'm know lost. what. I'm, I'm lost, lost too. I don't know what you're talking about, Mike, when you said my name while ago. I'm going, what? <laughs> oh, what did I say? You said something about the select board? Oh, I'm sorry. I meant to say Brooke, not Beth. Thank you. Sorry. So yeah, if you want to go into any detail on that, I think we should go into an executive session. But there's really not any big news to share with you. Now you're well, muted. Now we lost you, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. It's just I never know when Ezra's going to chime in. Um, what I was going to say is, we're not talking about litigation. We're not talking about an employee matter. We're not talking about a contract negotiation or getting advice from counsel, because counsel is not going to be on the call, on the, in the meeting. So I don't think we can go into executive session. So either we have it as a public discussion, or then I'd rather not. not dis then I'd rather not it discuss is. it. Um, Lynn, I. I have a question if it's okay before we turn to, to Vince's topic, just um, the request by the select board on Thursday night that we go ahead and forward the general manager's report, Mike's one pager yeah. um, each month and, and do it, I suppose, you know, at the conclusion of this meeting or something or the following day. So they have it on a timely basis. 
that was their ask. I didn't commit because I said I couldn't without. Yeah, I saw, I saw, I, I, I think that that's, it's, there's, there's, there's nothing confidential in this. Um, yeah. If there, if there is, it needs to be in a document that's marked confidential. Yeah. And, and, you know, if there are times when something needs to be segregated out because it is confidential, then, you know, that may require a slight change in format of, mm -hmm. of the report. But, um, you know, we are we are a department of the town. Um, I I I I don't. Mm -hmm. I frankly, I think to the extent that that they are more aware of what's going on, that's a good thing. Yeah, great. And, and so I I would I would be in favor of that. I I get the sense, Mike, that you may have some reservations, but I didn't quite follow what they were. No, I am fine. If that's what we want to do, I'm fine with it. I just, um, I just was trying to look at both sides of the coin and could see times where it might not behoove us to do so. But I think overall, it is a positive, you know, it's a positive effort to make. Yeah. I mean, I would suggest sending them the agenda and the manager's report before the meeting. Maybe, you know, they might come on Fine. occasion if they see something that's that's mm -hmm. of interest. That's you can do idea. that. If that's what you all want, that's what we'll do. That's fine. I, uh, in terms of the agenda, Mike, I, I was thinking about this, you know, Vince wanted to add something, other people may want, is if the agenda, if a, if a draft agenda could be circulated, you know, and understanding that we may need to add things or something even a week or so before that could serve as a, as a tickler, if you will, and people could take a look at it and say, um, yeah, can we add this or, or whatever, um, or do we really need to talk about that? Um, and, and then, then well, we, get it, we get it four or five days in advance, at least now, don't we? Right, but if I can get it to you like on Monday or Tuesday, that I would think that would, that's easy enough. I know what's going on by Monday or Tuesday usually. You know, and then, and then it needs to, you know, be, you know, people need to look at it and get to any, changes um or additions or something you know good within 24 hours and if not that's the agenda okay <laughs> so mike will you um will you tomorrow send off the agenda and the, the general manager's report and i think you're just sending it directly to all the select board members then you can decide if you know if OP or anyone else should get it other than the select board but it, the request was simply the select board Okay, so um, it's going to be the GM report. Yes. And then going forward, the agenda would go to them the week, to you and them the week before, to you for 24 hours, and then I would finalize it and send it to them. So they, my point is they don't want tonight's agenda tomorrow. Right. right. Yeah, I was thinking more forward. That's a good yeah. point. But that that it works for me. That's no problem. Okay. Which takes us to whatever it is that Vince wants to talk okay. about. Okay, I'll make a uh, one thing before that. I the energy committee updates. There haven't really been any, and I wanted to just give a thirty second update. Bill Chidsey is he's not really active and he, he's working at the co-op mm -hmm. and so there are really no updates to to uh, to give for the energy committee now the, the issue i want to bring up was the consideration of hardwick electric uh, in providing uh behind the metering and behind the meter storage incentives just uh, uh for dispatching power uh for peak shaving or other uses and you know, the 90% uh, of the ratepayers in uh, Vermont have that available, and 100% of the uh, of the ratepayers in the rest of New England do. And it's a really, it's a, it benefits the ratepayers, it benefits the utility. Uh, and uh, I'm just bringing this up as a topic, and uh, I can make a presentation uh, regarding that. And it, uh, you know, what what it would entail. Uh, you know, 
funding for it, any, any associated costs, any associated management um, liabilities, uh, you know, anyway, just a, just a, a basic uh, system that um, I can just give a proposal or not a proposal, but just a, a, a presentation at the next meeting. And, um, you know, with a, a reasonable um, plan in place for pursuing it. I mean, it's it's a it's kind of a, a win win for everyone. Okay, first of all, at the next meeting, we're going to have Delorean, hopefully, we're going to have Brooke, and AMI, and AMI. We're going to have to be somewhere on the rating, and we're going to have the rate increase. I don't think yes. any, I don't think we have any time for this at the next meeting. What I would suggest, Vince, is if you want to put together a proposal to the board, which we could take up in January or in February um, and I would suggest that you speak with Mike about finding out I mean you're making assertions as, as statements of fact that I don't know whether they're fact or not uh, uh, yeah that's fine on. and and um, something that we could then have time to reflect on and you know get it at least you know a few weeks before the meeting when we'll discuss it and 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 then we can have that discussion but i think until we get the rate case sorted i really don't want to pull interest away from that um because what you're talking about is 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 doing some kind of a rate because we'd have to to do that yeah, that would require a filing with the PUC, and and I don't even want to think about another filing. Yeah, with sure, yeah, but it, I I agree, and uh, I will put something together uh, that will you know lay out all the variables and all the advantages and all the potential costs and all the potential benefits. It's a yeah, I know I'm I'm making this statement. I, I'm not going to back it up because it would take a, a long time. But you know I'm making the, the assertion that it is a good thing. I, I understand that you think that it is, and we may all ultimately agree with you that it is. But again, I just, it's not something. Sure, that I, I agree. Yeah, and, and we it, have the time to be discussing until we file a rate case. Well, Lynn, I, I don't think, given what we have on the docket for the next meeting, I, I don't think we have room for AMI. I mean, we have. We have rate increase. We may even have some purchase question on long-term contracts because, um, well, that's obvious. Seabrook ends next month. And we have DeLorean and we have Brooke. I mean, I think we should have that AMI discussion at a special meeting. We I mean, could do that. We could do that. We can do that. I, I think that that will be kind of, I would like it to be in a situation where we can kind of ramble and talk and, and not have... Point. Yeah, good idea. It's, AMI. It's a, it's a good. It's a good point. So then, so I, I think then with the rate case, and Brooke, and Delorean, and Delorean, that's going to be more than enough. Right. Um, and I also wonder, how about, how about the possibility of meeting at four o'clock in the winter? The problem is, well, four four till what? Four till 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 six. Well, we never discussed the till. Yeah, well, but the point is, if we, we start earlier, if, if that just means that we run longer. I don't quite follow that, but. I mean, if we're well, not going to end at six, if we're not going to end at six, people need to eat dinner at some point. And well, I usually eat at six, so that obviously is gone anyway. Uh, but, well, anyway, but I just throw also, it out there's there. There's also the issue that if, you know, we still have to invite the public, and a four o'clock start is probably less likely to. Not okay. that we get the public very often, but at least we're okay. after work hours for people. We haven't seen a member of the public at one of these meetings for as long as I can remember. Yeah. But okay, fine. Let's forget but, about it. Yeah. Well, it also raises the question, though, of of should we be meeting in person? Because we might occasionally get somebody if if we did. Well next couple of meetings you're going to have people like Brooke and DeLorean and Ken who are going to come by Zoom anyway. Yeah. Um, I'd stick with Zoom for the winter. Yeah. 
Well, well, I, 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 I think it would be good to be meeting in person before the winter ends. I mean, we all drive up here. It's not like it's it's not like we stay. Uh, we say, oh, there's snow on the ground. We can't go anyplace. But I, it's not. It's just, it's a fine point though in terms of the next meeting. I think we're going to have people who aren't going to be here. Uh, a, oh, sorry. Um, can I just ask Vince to send out the technical details? of this proposal you're talking about, regardless of what the end result would be, I'd just like to see what it is you're proposing. Sure, I mean, I can, I can just pull it directly from, you know, one of 20 utilities in New England. Okay. And I'll just, so um, I wanna make one comment about DeLorean. I, I, you know, regardless of the value of, of their proposal or anything, I mean, it's a huge project, it's a huge potential commitment. And, and it's, uh, if we're entertaining their proposal, I mean, we either need to look at, you know, similar proposals. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's big enough. I mean, if I was doing a project with my business, I would I would get at least three people giving me proposals for for something a project of this magnitude, uh, with the details, and that way you could at least uh, discuss it and get some some kind of comparison. Uh, and I know it's it's more work. You know, going through that, but I personally, I think it'd be productive. And there are tons of companies that have long experience doing these kind of things. With, I mean, I can name a couple in Vermont. You know, Aegis, Wegg, Dynergy, uh, Convergent, Encore. Anyway, that's that's my comment. I I, I think there's value in before we certainly do anything. <laughs> final with anyone to have more than one proposal. And the question is, do we want to put out an RFP or do we just want to sort of get feelers? The reason that we were talking to DeLorean in particular was my, this is my recollection, is because VEPSA had already done a screening process. Right. And, and, yeah. and um, that is correct. That's correct. That's my, yeah. too. that was specifically what they presented to us. So on many occasions, we use BEPSA to do that screening, but just because neither we nor the other 12 municipals have the bandwidth to do you know, RFPs with multiple bidders, so they screen for us. But it doesn't mean we can't or in certain cases shouldn't. We gotta think for ourselves like we did today on AMI. We can certainly ask VEPSA for more background yeah. on why sure. they settled with DeLorean and what the and what the differences were in the, that was my yeah yeah because we were buying we we're sort of buying into their screen yeah um so should I try and line up a special meeting for the twelfth two Mondays from tonight? I'm looking at my calendar. Does that work. December 12th. It's going to be tough. Hang, hang on one second. I have I I had a class tonight that I missed that's meeting on some Mondays, and I would really rather not meet it, miss again, but I need to look and see when um, that class is meeting. Oh, well, we can pick another date. Well, I don't, yeah. Well, I mean, there are other things, and there are other people who have considerations as well, so... Um, I'm uncertain if I could do it right now. I have, I would be out of town. Any particular time that would be good for you, Roger? And cramming something in now for between now and the holidays is tough. Everybody, every company is doing budgeting now. So, okay. Well, if you want to wait. Till after our next meeting, that's fine too. Just if you guys give me a couple of dates to work with Jackie, I'll be happy to do that. I'm very flexible. Well, wait, I don't. That won't work with us giving you a million dates. So yeah, I mean, do you want to do you want to give us some a number of choices or I? When are you aware, is, Roger? I don't, you know, I'm, I'm traveling flat out all the time now. So what happened? You know, to I, can, <laughs> I might be able to get on, I might be able to get on a, you know, a, a zoom call that night. I was sort of processing in my head that I'm not going to be here. Doesn't mean I couldn't 
be yeah, on the 12th. I, I'm, I'm okay on the 12th. I, 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 all right. Well, why don't you all check out your 12th and let me know whether or not that's one I should target. I can do the 12th. Why don't, why don't we go ahead and, and plan it and I'll do my utmost to be, be on board. Uh, and we can also and say, and we're, we're if you, one hour, we're just you yeah. know, one hour discussion at most. But also, if you can't make it, Roger, we'll just regroup because everybody needs to participate. Yeah. So that's okay. okay. Yeah, we, there's no great rush. No. It works, it works for me. Okay. Well, can we make I, it? Uh, I'm making a note. It, can we make it 5.30? 5.30 sure. the 12th? That's fine. So tentatively, five thirty to six thirty on the twelfth, if it works for her. Yep, I'll set it up. Yeah. So Jackie, uh, as a consultant, I think she's done uh, AMI projects the size of the combined joint action that VEPSA is doing. I think she's done that with three other utilities. So she's been down, she's driven the boat before and uh, she's really helpful. That's good. great. I mean, all the finance talk today on AMI was all very good, but I think there's some really early basic questions that need to be discussed. And I can see that we may have to do this no matter what. And if we're gonna do it, we wanna do it now because of the grant. But still, yes. I'd be a lot more comfortable if we could discuss the advantages and disadvantages earlier on, right? December yep. 12th. Yeah. Because I think the thing looks nuts financially. <laughs> a lot of money. And for little old us, but not very many big users, you know. Yeah, if we if we were going to spend that money, AMI is not the first thing I would choose to spend it on. <clears throat> Get all those measurements from the users. Eh, what? From a bunch of farmers and retired people? What are you talking about? Anything else? It is six fifty nine. Is there? Is there a motion to adjourn? I so I make a motion we adjourn. <laughs> Is there a second? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> no. Second. <laughs> yes. Any discussion? <laughs> no. All those in favor? Okay, good deal. We are adjourned at 7 p.m.